There are too many families whose lives have been torn apart by fears and addictions. Families who have lost any kind of future. But by meeting the Speakmans, a married couple who believe there is always hope, in just a day, lives can change forever. And where there is hope, there is life. This week is the story of a woman who suffers from agoraphobia, a fear of the outside world, a prisoner in her own home. But Nick and Eva Speakman, who have worked together for 20 years, believe there is an alternative. Where medication and doctors fail, they succeed. It frustrates us hugely that people go through years and years of therapy, and in essence, all they're concentrating on is treating the symptom. We want to eradicate the problem so people can just get on with their lives. It can happen to anyone, and it happened to Nicola. Welcome to the Hope Clinic. This is Nicola's story. My name's Nicola. I'm a married mum of two and I haven't left the house for four years. I have depression, anxiety, panic attacks and agoraphobia. One minute I was fine and the next minute I wasn't. So it was, it was literally just like a light switch. The last four years have been like a living hell. When I think about going out, I get very anxious, very panicky, even now talking about it. It's like a habit. I think I've installed it into my brain that this is my comfort zone and anything out of these barriers is, is, is bad for me. Nicola met her husband Dave 20 years ago. They have two children. Evan and Alana. I was in a nightclub with my friends. Um, Nicola was a barmaid. It was stunning to me when I first saw her. I just knew she was a girl for me then. He, his dad, mum, shopper, cleaner. He does everything, everything that I could and should be doing. Dave does. He's really supportive. He goes to work, he comes home, and he takes the kids out to the park straight from work. She just feels worthless. That she's she can't contribute. Because she always has done before before she got ill. But there's nothing I can say to her to make her feel better about it. I don't know what's what's out there that makes me feel the way that I do, because I send my children out there. And that's what I find hard to understand because I can't say to anybody, this is what it is. The last time we did anything as a family was four years ago. We went on holiday. That holiday was amazing. It was the first one that we'd had with the kids and they were so excited. We went to Spain and it was really fun because we went to a hotel that had a big swimming pool. And that was before my mum got sick. Within a month of getting back from holiday, Nick was ill. Without any warning signs, one day was all it took to change Nicola's life forever. I'd got in the car to drive to pick my mum up and just remember having this really bad pain in my head and having to pull over because I felt literally felt like I was going to pass out. Um, and then just remember having this panic in me and from that day I've not been out since it literally just changed overnight I don't really have a life I exist her children's school is just yards from Nicola's house but even these few small steps are impossible for her We really want her to take us to school, but she can't because she's not very well. Bye. Alana, Evan. When I see them go through the door in the mornings, having to wave them off, it's horrible. Just, you know, to think that four years ago, that 
That was me, but to have to stand there and watch somebody else do what, what you should be doing, you know, it breaks my heart, because that should be, that should be my hand that she's holding. I tell my mum every day that I love her. And is that because you're worried about her? Yeah. Are you worried about her? And why are you worried? Because she might not get better. I feel, uh, you know, as as the male, I should be making it better for everyone, and I can't. There's nothing I can do, and it's uh, heartbreaking that I can't make things right. We have all forgotten what happiness it feels like. Happiness for us isn't the same as other families. If I woke up tomorrow and everything was fine, I think the first thing I'd do is get the kids and go to the park with them and have some fun. Because I'll miss it. And I haven't done it for such a long time. For four long years, Nicholas tried everything. Medication, therapy, and self-help books, but she still can't leave her home. I think I've now tried everything that that I I can physically try. I think this is like the end of the road for me. If, if I don't get help now, I can't see me ever getting help and I can't envision spending the rest of my life the way that I am at the minute. Nicola has nowhere else to go and lost all hope of a normal life. So she has contacted the Speakmans at the Hope Clinic. Nick and Eva believe they can achieve what doctors, hospitals, therapy and medication have failed to do in four years. Give her back her life. She seems absolutely desperate because she's explored every avenue available to her and she now tells us that we are her last hope. Why would someone not leave the home? for over four years. We need to investigate that and get to the root and find out what's going on there. Dave and the kids have gone out for the day to let Nicola have an intensive session with the Speakmans. Hello, Hello. Nicola! <laughs> <laughs> so Thank you. Thank you for coming. Oh. Our work starts with a hug. We haven't got time to build rapport, so it's really, really important that immediately they know that we really care. Nick and Eva need to find out why Nicola believes she can't leave her house. Tell us your story, what, what's, what's been going on? Well, well it started uh, about four years ago nearly now. I was just, just a normal day, took the kids to school, dropped them off. And I just remember driving down the road and having this horrific pain. Um, by this time I had like, joint pains. Um, I was experiencing like really bad tremors. Dizziness? The dizziness is there pretty much all the time. I was on the phone to the doctor's secretary, screaming at her, telling her she's got to get somebody to come and get me, I don't want to be here. Somewhere in Nicola's mind are all the clues that we need to find to get her out. Could I ask you, just briefly, yeah. give me a potted history of your life? Mum, your mom dad, dad, brother, sister. Oh, OK. okay. okay. Um, my mum's Eve. Okay. Um, and my dad, um, Alan, he's not with us any longer. He passed away? Yeah, he okay. passed away. Um, when was that? That was in 2006. Okay. What happened to your dad? Um, he was uh, in hospital. It was like partial negligence with the hospital. He'd gone in um, with pain in his back and in, in his leg. Um, and somehow or another he got lost in the system. He, they put him on a ward and nobody knew that he was in the hospital. Um, and um, it turned out they had a, a blood clot in his leg. OK. Just two weeks after her dad died, Nicola gave birth to Alana. Did you grieve? No, definitely not. No, I went into overdrive from the minute, the minute dad took his last breath. That, that okay. I took control of everything. And no, I've not, not didn't really grieve. And you see, you've not even grieved yet, have you? No. Okay. No, Why I not? can't because because I can't. <laughs> because I'm 
PCM. <laughs> because he should be here. They should have got it wrong. During our investigations, when we actually stumbled across the fact that Nicola's father had died quite a few years ago, and suddenly we saw the raw emotion in her face, we knew that that was a significant piece of evidence. I totally agree with you, your dad should be here. But let me ask you a question. Right, your dad's not here. We can do nothing about that. My dad's passed away, and I miss him, but I can't do anything about that either. And, but would your dad want you to be like this, thinking about him, or not? No, he'd be absolutely furious. He really would. Would he? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Nicholas told us her story. Now we need to observe and see what actually happens to her when she tries to leave her home. So should we, should we walk to the doorstep now? and potentially try and go outside. And you, can you give us a running commentary of what's, what's going, going on? on? This, I mean, it sounds awful, really. I'm glad we came today because this is, oh, this is not a life. Come. No, it's this not. This is not a life, is it? Come on then, let's go outside. So you're going to tell me everything? So, what happens when I open the door? Does that intensify or not? No, it does. My mouth's completely dry now and I can't really swallow. What's going on with all these, these dizziness things you were telling us about? And anything happening on that front? Um, yeah, that's, that's getting worse. Okay. I'm just going to step out here and I want you to come to the, to the door. So, what's happening now? How, how far could you walk out comfortably or could you not? Is there any comfort zone here at all? Um, I got probably a push to go to the step. Okay, go on, go for it. How do you feel? My heart's beating fast. Okay, so you couldn't, how long could you stay here talking to us for? Um, I'm probably getting to the point where I want to go back in. Okay. Can I ask you a question? Um, on a comfort zone, sort of um, between naught and ten, or discomfort, ten being like, I just need to get out of here right now, and zero feel being, yeah, totally chilled. Where are you? I'm probably about an eight. You're an eight about out of ten anxiety. Yeah. Obviously. Well done. That's great. Well done. Relieved to be back inside, Nicola starts to calm herself down. Ultimately, this started off with one thought process. She's driving the car, she doesn't feel right. What does this mean to me? Oh my God, this means something bad. And four years of her life has been taken away from her. Early stages for me are showing massive links with her dad. Maybe there's some similarities in what her dad said, you know, one day I was fine, and the next day I felt a pain in my leg, my head, whatever. And obviously she's sort of thinking, you know, unconsciously, is something really bad happening to me? For us to just say, well, actually, fundamentally, you made it all up and just stop being silly and go outside uh, isn't an easy job. It's just not on, it's got to change, and I'm so pleased that we're here today to do that. Coming up, the cure for Nicola's condition is somewhere within her past. To give her a future, the Speakmans must delve further. Your life's perfectly normal, and then on this one day, what happened to you? But can they succeed where doctors, hospitals, and therapy have all failed? We're going to do it. Mom of two, Nicola from Essex, has been a prisoner in her own home for the last four years trapped by an irrational fear of the outside world. Her family want the old Nicola back, but nothing has worked. We really want her to take us to school, but she can't because she's not very well. I would give everything. Everything I have, I would give to have Nicola back the way she was. But there is hope, as the Speakmans believe they can help Nicola reclaim her freedom and her future. 
We now know that Nicola's problem started at a specific moment in time. We need to now travel back and find out what actually happened in that car four years ago. I'd just like you to um, give us a recap of that day. Drove the children to school, took them into school, um, walked back to the car, got in the car to go to my mum's. Thought okay. I was going to pass out, so that was when I pulled over on the side of the road. Did you pass out? No, I didn't pass okay. out. But you thought you were going to pass out? Yeah. But you didn't? No. Okay. Have you ever fainted ever in your life? Yes. Describe that to me. Um, what happens? When it happens, I feel really weak, my legs go shaky, um, get clammy hands. How many times have you fainted in your life? Probably not that many. Five, maybe. Okay. Five. So the question is, did you survive? Yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah. So if you faint, it's not the end of the world, is it? No. Okay. On this one day, do you have any breakfast? I can't remember. Just Knowing me, probably not. Okay, so no breakfast. Yeah. Okay? Do you remember when you were in the car? Yeah. And what happened to you? It's the same as... Oh, that's said. right, yeah. So what does that mean? I was rushing around with the kids and more than likely hadn't had anything to eat. Exactly. Because if I don't have anything to eat and then I forget to have something to eat and I rush around, then suddenly my body goes, hold on a minute, something going wrong here. And... It's your body telling you that you need some fuel. Maybe your blood sugars were low, but you started to faint. Yeah. Instead of driving the car thinking, oh my God, I didn't have any breakfast. Oh, I feel really, I'm pulling over, I'm pulling over and going to a shop and getting something to eat. You came up with this catalogue of, oh my God, what's happening to me? Right? And what actually assisted with that? situation was what happened to your dad you see because your dad as you told us was perfectly healthy one day fit healthy okay and then one day he got pain in his leg and from that one thing bang he's not with us anymore you see so when that's happened to you recently instead of common sense prevailing and thinking, oh God, this is, I felt like this last time I fainted, I'll go and get something to eat. You now think, oh my God, something happened to my dad, something could be happening to me. And you go into this mass panic. That's right, that isn't it? Yeah. And yet four years on, still all right? Because nothing happened. All that happened is you were about to faint and you didn't. And the four years after that, nothing. You've been a prisoner from absolutely nothing. How does that make you feel? A bit daft. But it feels right, doesn't it? It makes perfect sense, what you said, perfect sense. So is there anything wrong with you? No. This issue in Nicola's head has become so huge that it's taken over her life. And our job is to help her to realise how ridiculous it is and how something so small has been allowed to turn a world upside down. So ultimately, the only thing that's stopping you going out the front door is something that you believe may happen. Is that fair? Yeah. Is that fair? Definitely. Yeah. Okay. So prior to this, what did the outside ever do to you? Nothing. Nothing at all? No. How okay. many years? Were you in the outside? Were you in the outside? <laughs> Lots. <laughs> and was it all yeah. right then? Yeah, it was fine. Nicola. How could you? 
there are a few signs that tell us that we're on the path to successfully treating someone. And when Nicola started to laugh at her own problems, that told us that we're making progress. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything at all? Just think inside now, because I can see that you've totally changed. You feel it? Yeah. What's changed? Well, I now know why I created hmm? this. And I've led myself to believe that I shouldn't go outside. OK. Once we were convinced that Nicola's problem had gone, we had to go over it and over it and over it so we could convince her. Just let me ask you a question. In the last four years, you've been an absolute prisoner in this house. How many times have you fainted? None. No. Okay. So going outside, just probability, going outside, what's the chances of you fainting? Zero. We went over and over and over it until we saw Nicola's confidence grow. Is there anything wrong with the yes or no? No. Nothing at all? No. When she eventually got there, we knew then that she was ready to take that big step. So can you go out, yes or no? Yes. Are we going to do it? Yes. Only hours ago, Nicola found it impossible to go further than her front doorstep. So this is a life-changing moment for her. Go for it, I'm asleep, you're fine. We're with you anyway. I'm here. Say. Once we got Nicola outside, Nick was assuring her whilst I was distracting her, just to help her to adjust to her new surroundings. Tell me how you feel. I feel all right. Yeah. I know it sounds strange, but at this point, we knew that Nicola had been successfully treated. It's just that she didn't know it yet. I can imagine your day was a massive frustration. And I know that when we see Dave, when we meet him, we're going to have to do something with him, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> to get him over his Nicola trauma. <laughs> Probably, yeah. yeah? Oh, Dave. <laughs> oh, Dave, I know. Will I see him? <laughs> They're proud of you. Thank you. Come on. Nicola has now realised she can leave her house, but this is only yards from her front door. Can she take a much bigger step? She could do anything right now. Outside, what would it be? Um, probably would have been something with the kids. Over the park, go to the okay. park with the kids on the swings and the slides. Is there anything no. stopping you? No. Okay. Shall we go then? Okay. Okay, come on then. Let's go. Come on. Nicola's husband, Dave, is in the park with the children. They have no idea that she is on her way and that they will finally be a family again for the first time in four years. The last time they were all out as a family, Evan was seven and Alana was only three, so she doesn't remember ever playing in the park with her mum. You're outside. You're outside. Well, you miss me? We've missed you so much. <laughs> I missed you. <laughs> I can't believe you're outside the house. It's a shock. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Oh, oh, we've heard so much about you guys. Sorry, I'm crying. <laughs> Have you caught for four years? Quite difficult, to be honest. It's been, it's been really tough. 
can imagine. Sorry, I'll duck crying. Now you're crying. <laughs> Everyone's crying. The glasses are better. Yeah. Thing is, mate, it's over now. I'm sorry. It's over. Fantastic. It's over. Thank We've you. Been a lot. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> you dumped me. Is that a surprise? <laughs> Massive. <laughs> Thank you so much for what you've done. You're very welcome. <laughs> I couldn't see this day coming ever. <laughs> <sighs> Nicola has actually reunited with the family and been set free. You know, she's been a prisoner for four years, a self-imposed prisoner, and it's affected her entire family. And it was just like letting the butterfly go. We do this every single day, but it never ever changes in that the feeling of you know watching these people transform in front of us is absolutely priceless. It really, really is. And to see her reunite with the family and to see them all together, it completely choked me. It was amazing because the whole family were just in utter shock and in fact even now they're still in shock and I think it'll take some time to actually register that they've got, you know, the kids have got the mum back, Dave's got his wife back. Well I left the house this morning and Nick wasn't well and this afternoon, wow my wife is back. <laughs> Hello, stranger. <laughs> lovely. Happy day. Happy very much. I am very happy, very excited, very emotional, very relieved. It's like a, a new beginning. All of a sudden, we've got a future instead yeah. of just a day to day existence. We've got a future to look forward to again. <laughs> <laughs> Next week is the story of a man who's been hoarding for the last 10 years. His condition has alienated him from his friends and family. He is desperate for his life back. But can the Speakmans help him at the Hope Clinic? <laughs> <laughs>